Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I want to say Happy Thanksgiving because tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and I also want to remind you to please uh, like and subscribe down below, especially subscribe so you can go be notified of all the new videos I have coming out. I'm going to be creating some really cool stuff. This one we're doing ridgeline plot. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make this amaz amazing uh, ridgeline plot. So if you look over here on the lower right, it's one of my favorite graphs to go and push into a, uh, a dashboard for users. And uh, this one and Sankey's are my favorites. And uh, this one, what it does, it shows up to, you know, five or six groups here. And it breaks them out by group. And in this case, we're showing buy here, pay here, car sales data. And this is for a local dealership here in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And so you can see the risk level, the amount due, and then the balance level. Now the data for this, I can show it to you either here in, uh, let's see right here. Okay, we can either look at it right here in R or we can look at it in Excel, same thing. And you'll see here the main columns I'm looking at are risk level, balance, and amount due. Now there's a reason why I picked those three out of this whole, you know, I could have picked customer ID, last payment date, late, whether it's yes or no, but there's a reason why I picked these, okay? Number one is I want something that shows me money-wise due. What is due? So we've got amount due. And then what we've got is the risk level has A through F, right? So the thing you'll see in uh, R is there's some limitations to this. Let me show you. That's the reason why I picked these. So the uh, let's go here to the actual code. So I have three inputs I'm going to use in a second here. And I'll go over this whole thing. But in this actual code here for the plot, I have an X. The, in the aesthetics area, I have an X, a Y, and a fill. All right. So the X is going to be your dollar amount, what you want to show, or your item amount, something like that, sales amount, sales numbers, stuff like that. The Y has to be something of six or less. So what that means is if I have like yes or no, that would work, but it would only show me two. Okay, two groupings. I want to have, this is your groupings right here. So this is your Y, this is your X. So this is going to be determining how many of these you have. But with these uh, ggplot, uh, the geome density ridges or the gg ridges, um, these ridge lines, they're limited to only showing you six groupings. Okay. So this Y can never be above six. It will give you an, a weird error and you'll, you won't be able to get past it. Now the fill, which is the color of these, see that? is limited to three. So you see down below where it says balance level, low, medium, high, it could be anything, but I can only have three. So if I had very low, low, medium, high, and very high, that would be five, right? It'll only show me three of those. It'll show me the top three, that's it. So I picked these on purpose because the balance level has three, um, which is low, medium, or high. And the risk level has five. One, two, three, four, five. A, B, C, D, F. There's no E, obviously. If I had E, it would show in here. Um, and then the X is the amount due. So when we're doing this, these are the packages. And this, obviously, here's your install package. I like to put that at the top in case anybody doesn't know how to use that. You put install packages for whichever one you need. And if you get an, a weird error when you're running the ggplot down below, um, the best thing I can recommend to first do is make sure you're on the latest version of R, not R Studio. R Studio is different. Um, we're using R Studio here, obviously, but you need to be on the latest version of R. So you can go to the CRAN website and download that. It's very simple to install. You don't have to uninstall anything. Just install it over the one you have for R. Leave R Studio alone. You, you know, just don't have it up because if you have it up, it'll remember and keep some of the pieces of R that you're trying to upload or update. So, again, here's the packages I use. Okay, we've got Read Excel, GG Ridges, which is a new one for you, and GG Plot 2. The GG Ridges is the one that has the uh, ridge line in it, which is this dense geome density ridges piece right here. So, basically, we do that, then we load in the data right here with a read xlsx, read underscore xlsx, okay, and it's wherever your uh, data file is located on your local computer um, or a server if you're using a, you know, a corporate workstation or something like that. These two 
right here aren't really doing anything other than showing me the data and there's a reason for that. I want to look at the data as I told you I want to make sure I have a and actually this should be updated this should be a I want a Y with max 6 and a fill which is the third piece which would be like Z or whatever with a maximum of three choices three different things in it okay so that's very important to have if you go beyond these it will error out okay and then you go down here and this is the actual code uh, so this is a ggplot so obviously you have to have ggplot up above here the library and what it is is bringing in my vector of the data frame right here which is the uh, file or the uh, data from Excel is read into this right here right above it right here this guy and so this becomes data 2 and then what I'm doing is data 2 is right here then I bring in the aesthetics function and I have as I told you x equals the amount due column y is the risk level column and fill is the balance level column then we got a little plus at the end here we bring in the geome density ridges function right there then we plus bring in the themed ridges function which goes along with that then we have this one where the legend position okay that would be this I could put none in here if I wanted to and then it would just take get rid of this I could also put it to the right to the left or the top those are your options here basically so I could just rerun this if I wanted to and say to the right let's say I wanted to do that instead and uh, I'll go over this last part in a second let me just show you what this does okay so we just do that and there we go see what happens it moves the graph a little bit it's the same graph but it moves over and puts the legend over here if that's what you want in that case you might want to make your graph a little bit bigger and uh, you know, so it shows it better, and that, that looks better like that. If that's the way you want it, you can also put it at the bottom like I had it. It doesn't matter. Um, you can also put it at the top, whatever you want to do. So let's go back to putting it at the bottom. Again, if I hit none, it'll remove the uh, legend. Okay, so let's do this again. Now, by default, see how it says low, medium, high? By default, it's not going to be that way. It's going to go based on the size of each. So if... For instance, um, the medium one right here, if that has the most values in it, that's going to go first. So it would be medium, low, high, or medium, high, low. And I don't want to see it that way, so I want to see it in order of low, medium, high. It won't do this by default, so that's why I've added in this last piece right here. And basically what this is, scale, underscore, fill, underscore, discrete, breaks equals C, and it tells it exactly, you have to put the exact names of the columns in here so mine or, or I mean that the columns but the uh, the values in that column so when you look at the uh, balance level these are the exact values in the balance level column okay of low medium high if I put anything misspelled in here it's not going to work correctly okay and what that does it says I want it in the order of low then medium and then high Okay, so if it comes out being medium, low, high, or high, low, medium, or something that's messed up like that, this is how you fix that right here. So that's an important line of code to have in there. Because with this one, it does. Um, it mess messes it up, and it's not in the right order. So if I were to go and do this, right, and let's just get that out of here, and let's put a, uh, let's just do this, right? Let's just run this as is. Now, it might still hold that in memory, but let's just see if it does. Let's just hit Control and Enter, and let's see what it does. See what it did? See high, low, medium? It's out of order, and I told you because the reason being, it's got more values in high than in low and then in medium. So that's how it does it by default, and that's out of order. So that now you can see firsthand why we want to have this, and you have to have the pluses to the right. Okay. So if you put the plus below here, it won't work. It'll error out. It wants to see the pluses on the right of each line and that's how that works just like that okay so now if I go and do this and I run that exactly like this watch it'll be corrected now see that low medium high which is what we want so what's really cool here is you can use this exact code to go and plot if you're doing marketing campaigns right let's say I've got uh, 
four different vendors and five different campaigns, right? So one vendor or, uh, you know, there's one vendor that's involved in two different campaigns, but they're all related at the same time. And I want to compare them all. I could go and easily do a uh, comparison through a uh, ridgeline plot and I could actually show, you know, where the peaks are and which are the ups and the downs. I could show instead of amount due, I could have the dates down here. I could have uh, redemptions of a campaign. I could have um, sales numbers, um, people that bought a certain item along with another item. I could do anything I want and what it'll do is it'll show me and it's really neat as you can see the actual pattern of you know like so in this case you know this is not campaigns but this shows you the value of this because I can see the breakouts of you know like so I know there's some mediums in a F level risk which is the people that owe a lot of money right and this is the amount due so right now these people at an $800 payment that's a medium these guys right here have medium balances right so balance would be for instance if their balance was thirty thousand dollars left on a car that would be their balance so a medium balance and the low balance is here right so they're about the same and then you've got this high balance that goes all the way out here so you do have people with a very high balance that owe a very amount of money a very large amount of money with risk level f at risk level d You've got a different breakout, and same with C and B and A. So it's just neat that you get to see this is how you do exploratory data analysis. You can sit here and look at this and say, hmm, there's a trend that obviously, you know, I want to identify these guys, D's and F's, and then I especially want to be able to stop these before this amount gets out to, you know, ridiculous levels here. But we're, obviously this company is doing something to deal with that. Because the amount due, do you see how it decreases? I mean, it is increasing here, but the amount of the people in that boat goes down and down. Okay? So obviously they're doing something to try and keep them here and hold them here. And then maybe even try and get them over to here, to a D and then maybe to a C. You know, to get them to make their payments on time. And, or come back and start making payments again. So these people out here, 800 to 1200, they've probably missed several payments, and uh, that's moved them from a A to a B to a C to an F, and we want to bring them back. That so that's showing them the breakouts of by different risk levels, the customers and stuff. These ridge lines are really cool uh, in a way to show data, but keep in mind, again, you have some limitations. You can only have three fills, right? three different values in your fill section or your fill column that you pick uh, you can only have six choices in the Y or you know in this case it's the risk level and unlimited in the X so the X could be anything it's your amount due so, um, so I hope you found this interesting um, I will do another one soon here with an actual campaign a marketing campaign so I can show you how to break out the data by different campaign IDs um, and then again, that could be translated to anything else, but it's a really cool way to show data. And then you can take this and put this into a dashboard and you put this with a Sankey diagram, which I've got videos on that out, out on my channel and maybe, uh, some customer segmentation, K-means customer segmentation. And you can really start to see, you know, where your customers are coming from. In this case, you could see where they're headed. Is it a good trend? Is it a bad trend? We want to get these guys. It's still a big number of these people out there. Let's get them from an F to a D to a C, you know, and so on. And obviously the A's are probably mostly new customers, so they haven't really had a chance to be late on anything yet. Um, but it's a great way to look at stuff, and it's very useful for all kinds of stuff. Thanks again for watching. Please, again, take a moment to like and subscribe down below. Uh, so you can be notified of all my new videos I have coming out. Also, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, and give me some ideas, tips, things you would like to see. Thanks again. Please have a great Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, and have a great day.